I like to be able to comment based on my own experiences. And I deliberately took the time to go to licensing authority to renew my road tax. Licensing authority closes at, I think the cashiers close off at 3 o'clock. I got there just after 1.30. And when I got there, and I went to the door, to the, cash, to the uh, security guard, the security guard said to me, I hear four goals that open the bench. So you sat on the bench and you ease your way in, ease your way in, ease your way in, ease your way in. It took me one and one half hours, one and one half hours to get from my position on the bench to the cashier. And some of the comments that I heard sitting on that bench, because I was dressed like any average Joe, I did not have on any shirt to suggest that I was BC any sort. And there were quite a few people there saying to me, but you know, this is foolishness. Why well, you can't open this at half past six and work till seven o'clock or eight o'clock at night? I couldn't let them see me smiling because that is a proposal I have been making for quite a while. But it made sense. And then when you got inside, there are 13 tower stations in an MTW. There's one on the high level, which deals only with, I think they said, new registrations. And from stations seven, I think it is, seven to 13, two cashiers working. And this is at two o'clock in the afternoon. And the line is out through the door. When I multiply the number of people I saw in there, and there were clearly probably 100 people ahead of me when I sat on the bench. If you multiply that by the number of man hours we have lost, productive man hours we have lost, just trying to accommodate that. If we know if we know that people, this is the pattern, <clears throat> how come it is so difficult to decide that licensing authority as a special case, and I'm not here bashing any UPW or any union, why can't you have special arrangements for cashiers at licensing authority? We saw the same problem when land tax payment times came around. You have got You've got a specific window if you want to get your 10%. And what happens? You go into the treasury building on, on top of Broad Street. You find two cashiers working, and half of our builders outside round the traffic lights stand up in the hot sun and dodge in the rain when it comes. You go to the authority, um, the old back office in Weymouth. You get up the elevator. And the first thing you see as soon as you get out the elevator is a line that snakes right out, right in through the building. If we know that October, or whatever month it is, is the crunch time for paying and getting your 10%, pray tell me, why can't we, for that period, say, double the amount of cashiers because you know there is going to be a crunch. Bajans will wait until two days before the deadline and come in and try to get the 10%. And then you've got absolute chaos in the system. It is going to happen in 2014, it is going to happen in 2015, it is going to happen in 2016. The same way several retail outlets in Bridgetown recognize that there's going to be a peak in demand at Christmas and bring on extra cashiers. Yeah. Why can't this be done in some government departments? Yeah. Well, you know, but David gets up to your specific question. One of the key things, a couple of things we need to have. And the first one, we have to change it up here. People have to accept that there's a need to change how we do business. We cannot afford to do business as we did it in 1950s, 1960s, 1970s. Sorry. Our customers, me, the rest of us, we are much more demanding in the service we want. And there's a demand up there for better service. I want to be able, when I'm at work, 8 to 4.30, 5.30, I can focus on work. When I get out, I can do some of the other things. Tell me why, in 2015, I cannot buy a postage stamp at a post office on a Saturday. I cannot pick up, I cannot pick up a package from the delivery of post office on a Saturday. No, just, just some simple things. 
what we have to look at is the amount of lost man hours, lost productive man hours that we're encountering every day. Because people either go and tell the boss lies, they're going to call in sick when they're sick, or they're going to time during the day. Just to be able to do the things that they legitimately have to do. But if you have that flexibility, David, suppose you lived in by corner, this is Lucy. And if you miss the six o'clock bus, you're not going to get another one for seven or seven thirty. So your day is premised around getting up the house by five thirty. You get the six o'clock bus, you get to bridge down at six thirty, four and seven. And you've got to wait for eight thirty before you can get into your office. Could you not productively employ your time by paying some of your bills if certain specific institutions were open from 6.30? I think the minister said it. Lots of people who would be prepared to come in and start working at 6.30 and go home at 2.30, 3 o'clock, because the site would suit them well. They come down, drop the kids to school, go into work at 2.30, school is finished, they leave work, pick up the kids and go home, look after homework, look after granny, look after whatever the case may be. So is that self-service is the way people are going for the future. So in other words, even things like um, services and businesses that are, are geared towards um, helping people plan their travel, those have been having to reinvent themselves significantly. Absolutely. Because people are self-serving. They're going online, and I don't say that in a bad way. They're going online, they're researching their vacation, they're booking online. Plane tickets, I mean, who actually, ever, when's the last time you ever had to go to a, a travel agent to, to actually pick up one? You go, you, you book online, and then in some cases you, you check in mm -hmm. online, so that all you're doing is getting your, you're putting your bags on the, on the conveyor belt when you get to the airport. Um, you know, any, any type of online payment, and every type of online payment, the first point of payment should be an online payment. That allows you to pay it whenever you need to, whenever you can fit it in to your schedule. If you need to go home and do homework with the children and then get them ready for bed and all of those things, when it's 10 o'clock, that's when you log on and you do your, your payments. The, the whole concept of, quite frankly, of standing up in any line for those kinds of things should be long gone. So I think the opportunities for self-service fit into a 24-7 environment, but that is the IT platform that needs to be worked on, and the minister has indicated that that's one of the committees is looking at those ITC solutions. You know, you, you must remember the days when you had to fill out your income tax return by hand, okay. and going to British and do it. Now everybody can sit at home and do their income tax filings online. And you talk about the, the cross in the platforms and that your employers can also upload the information onto the uh, BRA. Mm -hmm. So that certainly has reduced a lot. So I think government has been moving in the right direction in terms of uh, embracing ICT and getting a lot of these things in place. Uh, but we cannot stop there. Um, there's a lot more that has to be done, um, and the technology is there available. But there's some other issues that need to change. I mean, simple thing, this speaks to the issue of inefficiency and not so much flexible work hours. I was shocked the other day when, when my wife went to pay her vehicle um, tax, or tax, I think it is, to be told that they don't take checks over $1,000. And I said, well, will the government don't want the money there? <laughs> now, don't quote me on that part. But, <laughs> but, no, I'm a little amazed because if you write a check and there's not insufficient funds, that's somewhat of a criminal matter per se. But it meant that, that she would have had to go back to a bank, stand in line, or get the ATM card, and draw cash and drive back to a place. All of that speaks to so some, some simple little things that, 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 that right? need to be altered in terms of policy to get there. But I want to go back to the fundamental issue that they were let us keep running away from all the time, which is that as we work collectively towards identifying and eliminating these inefficiencies caused by duplication, poor use of technology, etc., it does not negate the importance of having more services, both in public and private sector, available 24 7 
and for Barbadians to move towards a more flexible work arrangement uh, going forward. And for all the constructive criticisms leveled at government, let me say that I don't know that the private sector in Barbados ought to get an A. Mm -hmm. um, the truth of the matter is that both sides need to take customer service a lot more seriously than we have in the past. I think once you start to take customer service a lot more seriously, because remember public offices are also customers, and I hear them complaining about other government departments to any private sector. Uh, I think once we move towards that, all of us are going to start finding the right solutions. 